ladies and gents, what's up? It's Lisa from ToCreateAWebsite.com and it's time for me to make that how to create a website updated video for my new subscribers or future subscribers that are just starting now and they want to know what's relevant. Now, if you already have a website, you might be thinking about dismissing this video because, well, you're, you've already started. You might not want to do that because I'm going to be talking about the state of the hosting industry and depending on where you're hosted, HostGator, Bluehost, iPowerWeb, PowerWeb, you might be affected by this. So how this video is going to work is I'm going to start off with the basics of creating a website. What do you need to start? The domain name, the hosting, and then probably in a part two, this will, this will need to be two videos because this will be too long. I'm going to go into WordPress and show you the fundamentals, blog versus website. Do you even need a blog mm, today? Mm. Also, how to use the blogging and static components of WordPress because I don't think it's about choosing blog or website. It's about using both. You can do both on one site and that's what most people probably should do. I'm also going to talk a little bit, not in too much detail, about plugins to use if you want to sell products from your WordPress site as well as start a membership site. But that's going to be very generic. So this is a great 101 two part video for people who are just starting. So let's start with what you need to start your site. You need two things. You need a domain name and you need a web host. The domain name is yoursite.com. So to create a website.com is my domain name. A lot of people want to choose keywords that they want to rank for in their domain because they think that that's going to help them get at the top of Google years ago. Yes, it was a big factor today. Not so much. Your ranking today largely depends on how popular your website becomes, how many people link to you, how many shares you get on social media. So what a lot of people do today, instead of worrying about the long keyword domain names, they're registering something more catchy. Or if you can get those keywords in your domain for description reasons, because it, it does help describe what your site's about when you can get those keywords in, but you want to try to keep it short enough so it's not awkward. And some people are foregoing the keywords altogether and just registering made up words, zumbala.com, you know, just because it's quirky and easy to remember. So it's really up to you, but don't think just because you've registered a domain name that has these keywords you want to rank, rank for, that's necessarily going to help you rank not for competitive keywords. I can tell you that. Okay. Next you need a hosting company. The hosting company can be the same place where you register your domain, or it can be a different company. Some people will recommend to keep these separate. Some people say it doesn't matter. The reason some people like to keep them separate is, is if something happens to one of the other companies, they don't have their domain and their host both hosted at that same place. But I will say probably most people end up registering and hosting at the same place. Anyway, it's, it's really up to you. So what's going on with this hosting industry? All right. Those of you guys with HostGator, Bluehost, DreamHost, PowWeb, I can go on and on and on. In fact, I'll put up a screenshot so you can see all of the companies I'm going to be talking about here. HostGator is not HostGator. Bluehost is not Bluehost. All these companies have been acquired by a company called EIG, Endurance International Group. So that's why you've been seeing all these complaints lately about HostGator, Bluehost and all these companies because their support has gone downhill because they're outsourcing a lot of their employees. So there really are only two hosting giants in the industry right now, GoDaddy and EIG for the most part. And I'm going to talk about some non EIG, non GoDaddy companies later no affiliate links attached, very unbiased view uh, because you guys know, some of you know, I am an affiliate for GoDaddy or a reseller for GoDaddy. So when you go to website palace.com to register your domain name or sign up for hosting or whatever it may be, then I get a commission for both the domain and the host. I am a reseller. I don't try to hide that. I just pray to goodness that GoDaddy stays GoDaddy and doesn't ever get bought out by EIG, which I really doubt because the reason why GoDaddy has been able to be around and stay as GoDaddy is because they are one of the first uh, and the largest registrars 
online. So I don't worry about them getting bought out. All I know is that I would not host a website today with any EIG company. And, and I'm not just saying this, you guys, because I am a reseller for GoDaddy, because honestly, there's some people out there that might not like GoDaddy either. I've learned that hosting is always as good as your worst experience. You know, if you have a bad experience with HostGator, which I did, then you feel like HostGator's bad. If you had a bad experience with GoDaddy, you feel GoDaddy's bad. I know people that haven't had any issues with HostGator or Bluehost. It just really depends on your own situation. But I'm just saying, be careful about hosting with companies that are owned by EIG. Just a warning, and I will link to all of those companies in the description. I'll, I'll link to an article that has all of those companies listed there. So if you don't like monopolies, maybe you're fed up with EIG and you don't want to host with GoDaddy for whatever reason, there are two companies that have been around a while that seem pretty reputable, no affiliation, and that would be number one, WP Engine. I've heard things about them as well, but I've also heard really good things about them. So it's kind of like, it depends on who you talk to, but WP Engine is managed hosting. It's a little bit more expensive than your five, $10 a month hosting, but it gives you a managed environment, meaning they handle your security. So you don't have to worry about installing plugins and all of that. And if you don't know what a plugin is, you'll see what that is in part two, but it's basically a little script that you install in WordPress to allow your site to do different things. So managed hosting takes care of all that security and the backend stuff for you. Another non EIG company is SiteGround. They've been around a very, very, very long time and I've heard a lot of great things about SiteGround. I've never used them myself, but if you wanna stay away from EIG, if you don't wanna support me at WebsitePalace.com, these are two reputable options that you also might wanna try. Oh, and I forgot to mention this. I had to come back later and add this little clip in. A lot of people ask me, Lisa, what do you use for to create? What hosting companies do you use? And I use Liquid Web. You guys, I'm on dedicated hosting. And when your site starts making money and you start doing things like I'm getting ready to do, sell courses on your own site, I think you need to get away from the shared five, $10 a month hosting. I've been on dedicated hosting with to create since 2009. So while I use website palace for smaller sites that maybe only make a couple hundred dollars a month or something small for my bigger sites that make good money are all on debt are all on dedicated hosting and liquid web only does high end dedicated hosting. And it's why you don't see me recommending it because most beginners don't need that level of hosting. They are amazing. They're not owned by EIG and after a horrible experience with many different dedicated hosts out there. I finally found one that I can speak about. That's why you never hear me talk about it because I have had the worst lunar pages. Please stay away from lunar pages, horrible experience with them. So I just wanted to put that out there because some people ask, well, do you use website palace? Yes, I do for smaller sites. Many of you know, website Babel, my forum was hosted there and I have some mini niche sites that are also there, but no, my big money making sites, are hosted with liquid web. So no matter what hosting company you choose, if you choose manage, what's great about managed hosting is that WordPress will automatically be installed on your account when you order. So you don't have to manually install WordPress, which is not that big of a deal to do. So once you've selected your hosting company, you've installed WordPress. If you need to, then you're ready to start your site. So in part two of this series, I'm gonna talk more about setting up your site in WordPress and just some things you need to keep in mind. Blog versus website, do you really need a blog? What if you wanna sell products from your site? What plugins do you use? Real basic kind of one-on-one stuff that'll be great for those of you who are just starting. So I'll see you in the next video.